What is going on guys? It is Nate Levinson here, bringing you another Top 5 video. Today, in this video, we're going to be talking about Top 5 Pokemon games. Now, when I'm talking about Top 5 Pokemon games, I mean remakes are counted as separate games, meaning red and blue are different than fire red and leaf green, and gold and silver are different than um, heart gold soul silver. So I'm going to be doing only the Top 5, as suggested by Squid Up, one of my moderators on my channel. Thank you very much, man. So guys, let's get into it. Coming in at our number 5 spot, we have Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. These games are the sequels to the loved and hated Pokemon Black and White. White while Pokemon Black and White were seen as a soft reboot of the series, completely ditching all the old Pokemon, Black 2 and White 2 have brought all the old Pokemon back in addition to all the new Pokemon introduced in Unova, which, by the way, is the most ever introduced being 156 new Pokemon. But what drives this game forward for me is the fact that the story is the best it has ever been. The games begin in a new town to Unova region called Asperic City. You, the player, are given a Pokemon by Bianca, one of your rivals from the previous game who is now a Pokemon professor's assistant. You then begin your quest with your rival Hugh. His sister had her portal, portal line stolen by Team Plasma Gun and he wants to get it back. At first sight, it might seem like a normal story, until you realize Team Galactic's plans on taking over the world. While the story is very good, it is slightly worse than Black and White's. So why does it beat that game? Purely because of all the Pokemon being accessible in the game, unlike in Black and White, when only 156 new Pokemon were there. Coming in at number 4, we have Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. These games are very different than the mainline Pokemon games. The player finds himself back in the Kanto region for yet another journey. This time, however, the core gameplay has changed up a lot. Instead of battling wild Pokemon, you capture them from EXP in a Pokemon Go style. This change really shocked people and made some people not want to buy the game. Me personally, I really loved the game and the charm that it brought. I loved the new mechanic of catching Pokemon and how that was the main source of XP instead of battling. Also, your partner Pikachu or Eevee was way too cute and also way too strong. You got a perfect IV starter, can't evolve sadly, but they will still, trust me, carry you throughout the game. They have a set of signature moves also that are really OP. All the charm and the new fun mechanics that this game brought is why it gets number 4 on my list. Coming in our number 3 spot, we have Pokemon Platinum. Pokemon Platinum is seen in the eyes of many Pokemon fans as the only reason the Sinnoh region was amazing. This is because of how slow Diamond and Pearl ran, and the lack of good Pokemon. In Platinum, however, this all changes. The game, while still slow, is much faster, and there are many more Pokemon to enjoy. A common complaint about Diamond and Pearl is the lack of fire types. There's Infernape and Rapidash before getting the National Dex, but that is post-game. In Platinum, however, there is now the Magmortaline, Eevee, so you can get Flareon, and much, much more. Platinum is the definitive version of Sinnoh, and it's a very fun time. The rival in this game is one of the best we've ever seen. Um, really try to test the player. One of the last ones before we get one of the friendly rivals. This game is truly amazing and deserves all the love it could possibly get. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have Heart Gold and Soul Silver. These games are by far one of the most popular Pokemon games of all time. They did so many things right that expanded upon what Gold and Silver brought to us. The Pokedex is vastly expanded, and that is mostly due to the fact that there are two more generations of Pokemon that found in the game. The selection of Pokemon is even better. Johto is known for bringing many baby Pokemon, but Sinnoh, the game that came out right before this one, is known for bringing new evolutions to those Pokemon. In Heart Gold and Soul Silver, it's super easy to get these new evolved Pokemon, as the baby Pokemon are super common. This game also added many new features that are sadly not still with us, including the Pokeathlon. As a really young kid, I played this so much trying to win all the awards, and it was some of the best, uh, most fun stuff I've ever played. The game is downright amazing, and it's really the best way to play Johto. My only complaint is that the leveling EXP given out is still scarce like in Gold and Silver. This game is amazing, but by the way, do not try to complete the Pokedex. It's really tough. Coming in at our number one spot is the most recent and maybe most controversial game in the series to date, Pokemon Sword and Shield. This game is absolutely phenomenal. The way that the game looks, the way that the game acts, the way that the game is, is just downright amazing. The best thing about this game is by far the competitive use. This game is obviously targeted towards competitive play with all the features that it brings. Online has never been easier. With the hit of the Y button, boom, you can link trade, battle, do max rebalance with real players because the NPCs are really bad and even Surprise Trade, which I absolutely love doing. 
The Wild Area is the most beautiful thing the Pokemon franchise has ever made. Controversy around this game stems from the fact that there is no National Dex. <laughs> National Dex, if you don't know, is what makes it so that every Pokemon is available in the game. Sword Shield only have 400 Pokemon compared to the 900 or so that exist. While in theory this is bad, I never found myself minding. I never cared about what Pokemon were in as long as the game was fun. And oh boy, it is. The sheer fact of the matter is that the game is very enjoyable, even without the 500 or so Pokemon that are missing. It is still Pokemon and we cannot expect Grand Freak to have to make 900 or more models. That is absurd. The game is objectively fun and for that reason I love it. The starters in my opinion are some of the strongest we've ever seen. The only one I personally think could be better is Drizzile, but that is the only one. As of the recording this video, I have played Sword and Shield three times already. It came out about three weeks ago. All different teams, all different concepts. One was a regular run, one of them was using one of them the first one was a regular run where I only used new Pokemon. The second one was a run where I used old and new Pokemon. And the third one I'm doing a Nuzlocke that I'm actually doing right now, I haven't beat it yet. I personally think that Hop is actually a very good rival, and Leon's an amazing champion. Prove me wrong. Even though I also hated him, I also loved Bead. In conclusion, Sword and Shield at their core are the best Pokemon games to exist. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world to me, and this is my first truly edited video. Shout out to Squid Up for editing this long video, and his channel will be linked in the description. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and turn on the bell so you don't miss another upload. With all that being said, see you later.